So let's continue with the math section in Strivers A to Z DSA course. But before that, hey, we are back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So the problem that we will be solving today is C of eras cross themes, something like that. So this uh, algorithm is something which is related to prime numbers. So in order to understand that, let's pick up a very simple problem. Given a number n, we have to print all the primes up till n. So assume I give you n as 10. So you'll have to print down all the primes till the number 10. So that will be 2, 3, 5 and 7. So there are 4 primes till 10. So you'll have to print down all the 4 prime numbers. Now, what is the extreme naive solution that you can think of? We know how to check a prime number, right? So it'll be like, okay, we'll start from i equal to 2 because that is the first prime number. We can go ahead till n and... We can call the prime function that we already know how to write. If this is a prime number, we can print the prime. So this will be the extreme name solution, the brute force. And what will be the time complexity? The outer loop is running for b go of n. And the prime check we know can be done in square root of n. So this will be the time complexity. Will there be any space complexity? No, the space complexity will be b go of 1. Obviously, this is an extremely expensive operation. Why? Imagine I give you n as 10 to the power 5 and I ask you to print down all the prime numbers till 10 to the power 5. Then the time complexity will be b go of 10 to the power 5 into square root of 10 to the power 5, which is a lot of time. And if I give you 10 to the power 6, then that's a lot of operations, right? So that is why this method is something that we will not be following and we'll try to optimize this. So what will be the optimized method? So what is taking time over here? The first one is the loop, which is iterating through each and every integer. And then there is a prime check. If I can optimize this prime check, and if I can do it in a constant time, if I can do the prime check in a constant time, then the square root of n will go off. And that is what I will be trying to do. And that is where this particular algorithm C of era toss themes or something like that comes in. So what I will try to do is, I'll try to create a black box where if I pass on an integer, it tells me if it is a prime or not. But this black box will be working in B go of 1 time complexity. So in order to do that, what I will be doing is, I'll be taking n equal to 30 just to explain you what algorithm I'm thinking of, like what is the black box that I'm, that I'm thinking of. n equal to 30, I'll be declaring a prime array of 31 size, that is one more than the number, okay? And I've started the index from 2, I've omitted the 0th index and the 1st index because I know that these numbers are never prime, like 1 is not a prime number, so we'll be starting off at 2. So to start off what I've done is, I've initialized everything with 1, all the indexes with 1 till the last index which is 30. I start from the second index till the 30th index, everything is 1. Okay. Now to start off what I'll do is, I'll start with the number 2 and I know that 2 is a prime number. That is for sure because that is the first prime, I'm very sure. Can I see this? If 2 is prime, any multiple of 2 will never be prime. Something like, 2 into 2, which is 4, that's never going to be prime because it has a factor 2. 2 into 3, that is 6, will never be prime because it has a factor 2. For a number to be prime, the factors can only be 1 and the number itself. So, obviously, 2 is a factor, so it cannot be a prime. 2 into 4, 8. 2 into 5, 10. These numbers cannot be prime. I'm very sure of it. So, what I'll do is, I'll be like, okay, Let's go ahead and mark them as 0. So I'll go ahead and mark them as 0. Perfect. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0. So I've marked every multiple of 2 as 0 till the number that is 30. Done. So 2 is completed. So what is the next number? 3. I'll again do the same thing. I'll be like, okay, 3 is a prime number. How do I know it? Because it is marked as 1. It is marked as 1. I didn't get a factor before. Okay, fine. 
So what's 3 into 2? That's 6. What's 3 into 3? That's 9. So we'll be marking all the multiples of 3, starting from 6 till 30 as 0. Let's do it. So 6 is already marked as 0. 9 will be marked as 0. 12 is already marked. 15 will be marked as 0. 18 is already marked. 21 will be marked as 0. 24 will be marked as 0. 27 will be marked as 0. 30 is already marked as 0. So 30 is done. What is the next number? The next number is 4. Now tell me one thing. Is 4 a prime? No, it is not because it is already marked as 0, which means someone marked it. 2 did mark it. That means it is a multiple of 2. Now tell me one thing. What are the multiples of 4? That's 8. That's 3. That's 16. Now all the multiples of 4 will also be multiples of 2. Agreed? Basic maths. All the multiples of 4 will be multiples of 2 as well. So do I need to go ahead and mark 8, 12, 16? I do not. Because it is a non-prime number. Got it? So I'll not do anything. I'll go to the next number. Which is 5. For 5, is it a prime? It is because it is marked as 1. It didn't find any factor or before it. So I'll start off with 5 into 2, that's 10. 10 is already marked. 5 into 3, 15. 15 is already marked. 5 into 4, 20. 20 is already marked. 20 is already marked. 5 into 5, 25. That's where I mark it. 0. Perfect. 5 is done. What's the next number? 6. For 6, do I need to do? Do I need to do anything? Because 6 is not a prime. So 6 into 2 is basically 12. That would be marked by someone who marked 6. 6 was marked by 2 and 3 because 2 and 3 both have multiples as 6. So they would have marked 12 and 6 into 3, 18 as well. 6 into 4, 24 as well. So you don't need to do anything. Got it? Perfect. Let's go to the next number. 7. Fine. 7 is 1. 7 into 2 is 14. So you can go ahead and mark it. 7 into 3 is 21. You can go ahead and mark it. 7 into 4 is 28. You can go ahead and mark it. All of them were marked. So you don't do anything and you move ahead. For 8, do I need to do no? For 9, do I need to do no? For 10, do I need to do no? For 11, do I need to do? Yes, because 11 is a prime. So 11 into 2 is 22. So you can go ahead and mark 22. 11 into 3 is 33. That is beyond the boundary, so you stop. Perfect. For 12, no need. For 13, again, you can do. And you can keep on doing. You can keep on doing. At the end of the day, this is the array that you will be having. At the end of the day, this is the array that you will be having, right? If I see... What numbers are marked as 1? So 2 is marked as 1. 3 is marked as 1. 5 is marked as 1. 7 is marked as 1. 11 is. 13 is. 17 is. 19 is. And 29 is. And 23. What is 23? Is 23 a prime? That is a prime. So 23 is also marked as 1. So all of these numbers that are prime till 30 are marked as 1. Apart from that, all the numbers are marked as 0. Very simple. Now, I have an array. I have an array primes. If I ask you, hey, if 5 is a prime, so you'll be like, prime of 5 equal to equal to 1. Yes, it is a prime. So, I have a black box that can tell me the answer in big of 1. But what I need to do is some pre-computation. Some pre-computation is what I need to do. Now, this pre-computation is known as Seep of Erastosthenes. Got it? I'll, I'll write the code. Then we'll try optimizing that as well. The code is very simple. Function which takes n. And I'll have to print down all the prime numbers till n. So, first of all, we can have a prime array of size n plus 1. Please make sure you run a for loop from 2 to n and mark everything as 1. Mark everything as 1. So that's very simple. You can start off the loop from 2 and you can go on till n. And you can say prime of i equal to 1. 
if you're using C++, you can use Memset for Java. There might be something like that. You can use it as well. So this is what I'll do initially. Done. What is my next job? My next job is to iterate from the number two till n. And what do I do? I'm saying, hey, if the number is prime, if it is marked as one, if it is marked as one, then I go over its multiple and mark all the multiples as zero. That's what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm saying, okay, fine. I'll start a loop j and that starts from 2 into i and j goes till n because that is the max I need and will it be j++? plus plus? No, it won't be j++. plus plus. It will be j plus equal to i. Why? If, if I take 5, 5 into 2 is 10, 5 into 3 is 15. So the shift of 5, there's a shift of 5. That is why I'm doing plus i. That is why I'm doing plus i. Got it? Okay, fine. What do, what do I do? I mark all the multiples as 0. That is the thing that I'm doing. If is completed, for loop is completed. I will not be calculating the time complexity because you cannot pinpoint the time complexity of this one. This loop is easy to compute, but this one will be varying according to the i, so we cannot pinpoint. I'll try to optimize this. Is this the most optimal solution? Probably not. But you have your prime ready. You have your prime array ready. So now in order to print all the prime numbers till n, what you need to do is you need to run loop till n and you need to say if prime of i is equal to equal to 1, you just have to print i. So I've trimmed down. Trimmed down the square root of n into big of 1. The only thing I need to do is make sure this pre-computation is done in the most optimal time possible. So, so now I'll try to optimize this. Let's try to optimize this. Some observations. So the first observation. Some ob so in order to optimize this, we'll have to do some observations. Let's start with the first observation. It's very simple. We started with the first prime 2 and we marked 2 into 2, then 2 into 3, then 2 into 4, then 2 into 5, and so on. For the next prime, which is 3, we started marking 3 into 2, 3 into 3, 3 into 4, 3 into 5, and so on. For the next prime 5, we started 5 into 2, 5 into 3, 5 into 4, 5 into 5, and so on. For the next prime, 7 into 2, 7 into 3, 7 into 4, 7 into 5, 7 into 6 and 7 into 7. Okay. Tell me one thing. For this 2, it is absolutely okay to start with 2 into 2. But for this 3, I'm saying 3 into 2. I'm saying 3 into 2. Do I need to do it? Because this is already been marked over here. This 2 would have already marked 3 into 2. Right? So do I need to start from 3 into 2? Doesn't make sense. 3 into 3 is the first number that I start from. 9. And then I go ahead for 12. 12 would be marked, but that is okay. But if I start from 3 into 3, will it work? It will. Let's look at over here. 5 into 2 would already be marked by 5 into 2. 2 into 5. 2 into 5. 2 into 5 would have already marked it. 3 into 5 would have already been marked here. 5 into 4, which is 20. And 4 is a multiple of 2. So that have been already been marked by 2. Okay. So you actually start from 5 into 5 which is 25. And that's the first number you mark. Same with 7. 7 into 2 would have been marked by 2. 3 into 7. By 2. By 5. And by 2 or 3. 42. Because this is 42. Which would be marked by either 2 or 3. Agreed? So you actually start from 7 into 7. So what I observe is, I don't need to start from 7 into 2. Like basically, I don't need to start from i into 2. I can straight away start from i into i. I can straight away start from i into i. Okay, perfect. I can straight away start from i into i. I know this. One optimization done. What is the next optimization? If I'm starting from i into i, 
let's take the number as the number is 30 right n is 30 and the moment i reach 6 the moment i reach 6 what happens is i is 6 okay and this is false fine after that i is 7 and this is true what happens to the j loop is 7 into 7 that's 49 49 lesser than 30 is false so actually you don't mark anything beyond you don't mark because 7 into 7 would have exceeded your number right so do i need to go till n i don't need because you have a condition as i into y so the max you need to go is till square root of 30 that's 5 point something see if you go till 5 it will work if you go till 5 it will work because for 5 the inner loop will be 5 into 5 that's 25 and you'll mark 25 as 0 got it so you don't need to loop till this instead of it you can do square root of n so you can write the for loop as for i equal to 2 i into i lesser than n and i plus plus if you write this it will be absolutely fine so you're optimizing and we have optimized a lot so you might be thinking okay we're doing a lot of pre-computation but what is the time complexity first of all we're running a bigo of n loop in order to mark all the numbers as one so that's a bigo of n this one I cannot explain you because this is something which is mathematically proven and the time complexity is n logarithmic of log of n that is the time complexity and it's because it's a prime harmonic series and no one will be asking you to derive the time complexity because it is extremely complicated so do not get into it just remember that the time complexity is n log of log n it's not log n it's log of log n okay and after that this is another big of n so in order to print all the primes till n the time complexity is big of n plus n logarithmic log of n plus big of n again this is a pseudo code you'll find the c plus plus java python and javascript code given below you can check it out and what will be the space complexity? I'm using an extra space of B go of n in order to make sure I create that black box. Got it? So that was it for C of era toss themes. I hope that I got that correct. So if you understood everything, please, please do consider giving us a like. And if you're new to our channel, do consider subscribing to us as well. With this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's meet in some other video. Till then, bye. Take care.